What is up ladies and gentlemen, CJ the Cheese DJ here and we are back with another Ark Insight for you guys today and today we're taking a look at the Gigantopithecus versus the Dinopithecus. So guys, if you're unaware, pretty much what we do is we compare their base stats, their abilities, how to tame them and all that and then we pit them in a battle to the death against each other. So we're going to see how that goes today, but first off, let's go over the dinos. Now, both these guys are level 1, and in terms of stats, they're actually very similar to each other. You can see here the Gigantopithecus has 640 health, 300 stamina, 220 weight, and a 125 melee damage percentage. We'll be going over their base melee damage in just a second when we get a, uh, a tame in here. As for the Dinopithecus, he's actually not too far off in terms of health. So, 775 base HP, 800 stamina, 350 weight, and then the same 125.8% melee damage. But this guy will hit harder than the Gigantopithecus. So, he does have a little bit higher HP than the Gigantopithecus, but only by like 100 or something like that. So, let's test out their melee damage percentage. So, base melee damage for the Gigantopithecus is 50, and for the Dinopithecus, it is 57. So, once again... Very similar, however, when you do start scaling these guys up in terms of levels, you'll see that there will be a dramatic difference between the Gigantopithecus and the Dinopithecus. Now, let's go over their abilities real quick. Gigantopithecus, which is the one that we are riding on, has the ability to slam and throw the player. Now, the primary attack also can arm asunder. So, very similarly to the Arthropleura, the Gigantopithecus is capable of breaking through player armor very easily. So these guys can be useful for PvP if you've got like a bunch of foot soldiers for them and you use these guys to run around attacking enemy players. Although the chances of you possibly using a Gigantopithecus in battle are very slim nowadays. Now as well as that, Gigantopithecuses can also wield helmets as their armor saddles. So essentially what you can actually do is you can buff your Gigantopithecus and even use him to soak turrets. I have done it before, you just need a really good blueprint for the helmets, otherwise the helmets will break ASAP. But this allows your Gigantopithecus to essentially tank so much damage. And this applies for the Dinopithecuses as well. Because the armor on the helmets is so much higher than saddles, you can easily get 400-500 armored helmets. So keep that in mind when you go about trying to use Dinopithecuses or Gigantopithecuses. Now another ability of the Gigantopithecus is he can pivot on the spot. You can see here we're able to walk in any direction, any way. As well as that, he also has the capacity to pick up shoulder mounts. So you can see here if we get close enough to it. There we go. You can see there we have a monkey on our shoulder as well. So you compare this with Microraptors, Pigomastixes, and you can even throw them as well using the C button. So, it's kind of worth it. You can also have one on your own shoulder as well. So, it can be like a big old dino train of shoulder pets. So, keep that in mind as well. Now, the Gigantopithecus is also capable of gathering berries and fiber as well. So, he's definitely a good fiber gatherer if you want one that gathers fiber. Definitely go for the Gigantopithecus. Now, in order to tame your own Gigantopithecus, you need to squirt berries, vegetables, or regular kibble up its butt. Now, it is a passive tame, so this will take you quite a while, especially if you are doing this with berries or vegetables, and obviously it depends on your taming rate. But you can see there are 130 took 4% from one Mijo berry. So you can use vegetables and you can use regular kibble. After the first feed, run around and do some stuff because it will take like a solid 5 minutes before it's ready for its next feed. And from that point onwards, you're looking at about 30 seconds in between each feeding interval. So, definitely worth getting though if you're after some fiber or stuff like that, because this guy's really good at gathering fiber. So guys, that is everything for the Gigantopithecus. Let's go over the Dinopithecus' abilities. Now, the Dinopithecus has three attacks. He has his primary attack, which you can see there. He has a secondary attack, which does a ground pound attack. As well as that, he also has the capacity to throw poo. Now, you can select your poo or grenades. And these poo and grenades, well, the poo will disable tech, whereas the normal grades will, grenades will just straight up do normal grenade damage. However, if you do have poo in your monkey's inventory, you can actually choose the infested grenade option. And this will cause your grenades to do the poo effect, which will disable tech and slow down enemy players. So it's very useful for that. They also produce poo at a rather quick rate as well, I might add. They do produce poo quite a lot. Now, now like I mentioned, you can combine poo and grenades to make an infested grenade. And this will apply the slow effect and the uh, tech disruption effect. Because the Dinopithecus's poo will cause the use of tech to be disabled. So it's really good for PvP aspects if you are playing on like Genesis Part 2 where everyone uses tech. 
you can go ahead and use these guys to actually disable the enemy's tech stuff. So it's really useful for that as well. Now, as well as that, these guys are capable of gathering poop off the ground, which is obviously really useful if you've got a Fiomia and you just want to smack it to get some poo, because that'll enable them to fill up their poo gorge, and then you can use that to throw grenades and poo at whatever the heck you want. Now, these guys also have an extra ability, and that is the pack buff. So these guys will get a pack buff if they are in a group under 10 size. So you can use this, and you can actually command your monkeys as well to attack. Now, with their attacks, they will apply a bleeding effect to whatever it is that they target. So you can see here, if you use the battle cry effect, it will send your other monkeys to attack whatever it is that you targeted. And they will suffer a bleeding effect. You can see there that the Parasaur is bleeding. That does 10% health damage over 10 seconds, I believe. So the Dinopithecus is a really good for shredding large targets. For example, if we come over here and we attack this Bronto, you'll see that they'll be able to shred it relatively quickly even though it's a Bronto and it has a lot of health. Now, the Alpha will be the highest leveled one, so keep that in mind. But you can see there, the Battle Cry has taken effect, and they are jumping to the Bronto, and they will cause a bleed effect in just a second. Uh, I believe there's an actual 10% chance to cause a bleed effect, but you can see there, there it is triggering, and that will drain the Bronto of his health. So, really effective at taking out larger dinos and all that sort of stuff. I would heavily recommend using the Battle Cry effect. And like I said, you can have packs of up to 10 Dino Pithecuses. So that's 10 of these big boys that you've got attacking at once, which is pretty incredible. So keep that in mind. Now in terms of taming these guys up, they are semi-easy to tame up. I have covered it in a recent video of mine. Essentially what you need to do is find a pack of them. You need to kill all but the highest level one, and you'll be able to tell who the highest level one is based off the orange glow around it. And you can see our Mesopithecus is also contributing here. So once you've killed the rest of the pack and you only have the alpha left, it's simply a matter of a passive tame. You will need to weaken the alpha to 85% of its health. And once you've done that, you will then have the capacity to passive tame it and, uh, and feed it and tame it up like that. So you can see the orange glow around our current monkey. That's how you know which one the alpha is. These guys are also able to, oh, calm down. These guys are also able to harvest up meat, hide, and all that good stuff. They aren't able to harvest berries though. So keep that in mind. They don't harvest any berries, but they do deal a lot of melee damage and they are good at harvesting a lot of meat and hide. Now they also have the ability to jump and climb up structures. Uh, their climbing is a little bit funky, but it works. As well as that, as far as I have tested, they do not take fall damage. No matter the height that you fall from, they do not take fall damage, as far as I've been able to find. So you can see here is the climbing mechanic. All you need to do is then use your movement keys to scale up whatever it is that you want to climb. These guys are also exclusively found on Lost Island at the moment. You can spawn them in on other maps using admin commands, but in terms of wild spawns, they are only found on Lost Island. So guys, that covers all of the dino... Oh, I almost forgot. Dinopithecuses can also wear the helmets as well. Whatever helmet you want to put on, they have the capacity to wear and it will cause them to take less damage. So I'd heavily recommend using that and they have the ability to jump just in case I didn't uh, convey that while we were constantly jumping across the map. So that's everything about the Dinopithecus and the Gigantopithecus. So let's pit them in a battle against the death against each other at level one and see which one comes out on top. Okay. I have fixed the issue with them not attacking, so now it'll work. But place your bets in the comments who you think will win. Honestly, my money is on the Dinopithecus. He does hit harder by a little bit, and he does have a little bit more health. But I think that the Gigantopithecus might be able to win this if he knocks him back enough. So let's let the match commence. We are going to take off into the air so we don't get targeted. We're going to disable that, and let's get this under away. So, we're going to see who wins here. Like I said, the Gigantopithecus does do a bit of a knockback effect. Which is why I was contemplating that he could possibly win. It's going to be very close. Here we go. I think the Di Dinopithecus is going to win. Yep. There it is. Dinopithecus wins, but only just. 73 health. So, a if it, the Gigantopithecus managed to get two more attacks in, it would have lost. So, it was definitely a close one, but in terms of, like, stat growth on both of these guys, I do believe the Dinopithecus is stronger. So, for example, if we spawn in, like, a 150, 
and then we spawn in a 150 Gigantopithecus, you'll see that the, the stat growth between the two is significantly different. Like the Gigantopithecus does fall off quite a lot in comparison to the Dinopithecus. You can see there the health difference is just is massive. So that alone causes the Gigantopithecus to really fall off. But the Dinopithecus is the winner of this bout. Let me know what you guys thought of the video down below in the comments. Let me know whether you'd like to see more. But other than that, guys, thanks very much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.